like to uh, welcome our, our sponsors who are B4 Networks, uh, Niagara's largest IT services um, organization and Growth Associates. Um, we also like to thank our partner, Niagara uh, Board of Trade and Commerce. Uh, the format today will begin with an update from uh, Mayor Steele um, and we'll thereafter open it up for questions. Um, please note that in the bottom of your screen should be a QA button. Feel free to um, submit a question anytime throughout the presentation and we'll try to answer them um, uh, in the Q&A period. If we don't get to your question, we'll uh, certainly do our best to try to get you an answer and return it to you um, after the session's completed. Um, I'd like to now pass the floor over to uh, Mayor Steele. And uh, Mayor Steele, we look forward to hearing what you have to say. All yours. Great, Brent, thank you very much for having me. And uh, we thank the Chamber of Commerce for putting these series on. I think it's so important that the public gets to hear what's going on in each municipality really right from the horse's mouth. <laughs> so, <laughs> Love it. Uh, so as always, and I do apologize to everybody, I've got a brutal cold right now. So you may see me mute myself to cough, but I do apologize. <clears throat> so it's always a great opportunity to talk about what's happening in the city of Port Colborne. And like, so, <clears throat> excuse me, like so many other municipalities, I'm proud of the Port Colborne community and our staff who have shown resiliency and creativity as we have navigated through the COVID-19 pandemic. So I appreciate this opportunity to give you a quick little highlight of what we've been up to the past year and what we've accomplished. So I'm going to share my screen right now and then bring my uh, program forward. Great. <clears throat> so with regards to our fall 2021 update, um, we'll just uh, breeze through these. And uh, I promise it's a little shorter than last year. So really, this is what's happening at Port Colburn. Uh, just a quick rundown for everyone. I wanted to briefly chat about the city of Port Colborne and how it's responded to the COVID-19 pandemic, what our strategic priorities are for, the, are for 2022, and what the various departments have been up to and how Port Colborne is positioning itself to come out of the pandemic even stronger. I'll also talk about how our new strategic plan is guiding everything that we do. So we're gonna go through a bit about the strategic plan, our COVID-19 uh, response, customer service, website rebranding, uh, Port Colborne's potential growth and economic development, our digital Main Street program, tourism for resilient Port Colborne, community safety and enforcement, public works, community development, Christmas in Port Colborne, our historical marine museum, and our public library. So all the great things happening in Port Colborne are guided by our new strategic plan that was adopted by Council in May of 2021, and our values and strategic pillars are, are steering us into 2023. So as you can see on the screen, um, you know, our new vision statement is a vibrant waterfront community embracing growth for future generations. Our new mission statement is to provide an exceptional small town experience in a big way. Our corporate values are there. Our community pillars, which are really guiding us right now with regards to how we are moving forward through our budgeting program and how we move into 2022. And the corporate pillars, which are very important um, to not only the city and its management and counselors and the mayor, but also to the uh, residents of Port Colvin and how that moves forward again into 2022. So with regards to our COVID-19 response, we continue to work with the Niagara Regional Public Health and the Ontario government, and, but our number one priority continues to be the safety of our residents, staff, and guests who come into Port Colvin. Over the summer, we had the Explore Port Colvin uh, campaign, which promoted Port Colvin attractions, driving residents to explore the city, local shops and restaurants. We had a huge customer service focus, continuing to meet the needs of our community and innovative and creative solutions, which was a digital approach to programs and services. Customer service. So we're continuing to focus on customer service here in Port Colborne, especially as we continue to navigate COVID-19. This helped to establish our overall customer relationship management project that revamped our approach to customer service. It included the update of our phones, accounting system, new website, implementation of work order and service request software for call tracking. And that's something so important to this council. When we came on board in, in 2019, the first thing we did was we got rid of the old, uh, you phone in and get a voicemail and figure out how what buttons to press. And we, we have live people on now. So when you call city hall, you connect with a live person, they can direct you to where you wanna go, or you can actually, uh, talk to them about the issue and most issues they can actually probably fix right then and there but if not they put it on our system 
it's tracked. So the, the best thing about this is that, so, you know, when Mrs. Smith calls about a, a tree issue or a sidewalk issue or whatever it may be, that's all put down. So there's a date that goes with that, that Mrs. Smith called, it goes out to staff, staff contact Mrs. Smith, all that information, date and time go on there, a synopsis of what was talked about. And then if there's a site visit needed, that goes on the tracking system. So by the end of the day, what happens is that if somebody calls back and says, hey, I've never heard from anybody, our customer service team can say, well, no, Mrs. Smith, you've actually been contacted by the city, you know, three or four times. We've been out there and the work order has been processed and work will begin on, on a date that may be set in the system or, or based on uh, time and what's going on if we need to go out to any contractors like tree trimming and things like that. So the great thing about this is that, you know, city can't fib about things and the public can't fib about things, which is, which is so good for customer service. And, and we're finding that the, the response from our community and, 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 and really the, the, the residents that are phoning in are, are getting things done a lot faster. It's tracked way better than it used to be. Um, you know, and a lot of this is based on new technology. So I think everybody's happier about it. Our staff is actually happier about it. Things are getting done sooner and the public is, is, is satisfied that in reality, you know, they, they pay their tax dollars. They want things looked after. So um, that's being done right here in the city of Port Gomer. So our new website rebranding, uh, it's a new look and feel with a focus on customer service. There's a new business directory. The request a service online is there. So if it's after hours, you can go on, you click the request a service tab, you complete uh, the, uh, the short uh, name and address and reason why you're putting in a service call. And then that's processed the next day if it's after hours or even during the day, um, our customer service staff will process that, put it to the right department. Uh, our current focus is on updating signage throughout the city on the rebranding side of things. So we're moving forward with that. Port Coburn's potential for growth. So this is very important. So this, this is, these are things that are actually uh, within the planning uh, department right now. Our preliminary pre-consultation uh, or draft plan approvals, which are, which are on the table right here at the city of Port Coburn. We're looking at over the next number of years, well, 3,207 new units in Port Coburn. That's a mix between apartments townhouses and single family homes. Really over about the next 10 uh, years, we're looking at a growth of around 8,017 new residents, which is assuming two and a half people per household. So that can vary if, you know, if it's less than that or if it's even greater than that. So, um, so based on current projected development opportunities, we're seeing a potential for increased growth within the city. We're doing work to prepare this growth, which includes a land use policy, community improvement plans, incentive developments, infrastructure needs study master plan, just to name a few. And this potential growth in the work we are doing to prepare is going to have a spinoff in so many other areas for Port Coburn, for residents and our business community. You know, and we just look at the downtown core and, and a big thrust with council is the fact that we'd love to see more um, uh, apartment style uh, complexes going up in the downtown core. More people living in your downtown means more people using your businesses. So our business community, uh, you know, they benefit from this, but also on the tax side of things, the community as a whole benefits for new residents, as well as the developments that are going to go on in our subdivisions that are continuing to grow, whether it's Westwood, the old Augustine farm, or the new Northland estates up by the Sobeys and Canadian Tire Mall. So under the economic development, uh, we've got a, an affordable housing partnership with Port Cares. So we've undertaken uh, this partnership with Port Cares for development of an affordable housing at Chestnut Park. And in turn, we're redeveloping Lockview Park into a, a greater uh, uh, play area for the neighborhood. And it's going to be virtually a great neighborhood park that's there, obviously for everyone from Port Coburn to use, but really it's going to be dedicated to that neighborhood. And we've been consulting with the neighborhood with how it's going to look. That's come to council. So we've had, we've seen some uh, renderings of that, and then we'll, con we'll continue to grow that uh, program. The timeline for full funding and construction is dependent on approvals for rezoning, but the goal is that that new affordable housing project be completed by 2024. We're also undergoing a comprehensive review of our CIP programs and a report uh, with recommendations will come back to council in the third quarter of next year. An active transportation master plan uh, request for proposal is going out and that will guide us to improving the connectivity of our trail system with the rest of Port Colburn, whether it be our downtown core, our main street area, uh, and the other uh, lakefront areas of, of Port Coburn, Nickel Beach, uh, Cedar Bay Beach, and, and so forth. We're 
moving forward with our Roselawn strategic planning session, which is scheduled for November the 20th. And for our local restaurants, an expansion of the patio season into late fall has been approved by council. You know, that's an initiative that council took on uh, when the pandemic hit was to, you know, when everything was kind of closed down, but restaurants were still able to, to utilize patio areas. You know, we moved very quickly to bring in the 15 minute parking downtown to allow our business to expand patios, whether it be on their own property um, or on our city sidewalks or even on the parking spaces. Uh, we did have a uh, canal site expand into the uh, West Street uh, Park at uh, overlooking the canal, which was a huge hit for tourists. I received a number of emails and, and the furthest away I received was uh, tourists from France that felt like they were in France and how things are done over there with the way um, uh, West Street uh, was set up that year for uh, and, and this past summer for, for the uh, for the patio. Um, so, you know, these are big things. I mean, you, you drive around town on a beautiful Thursday, Friday afternoon, Saturday, all our patios are always busy, which bodes well for business, specifically during COVID. So that was a great response that uh, we worked really well with our BIAs and our business community uh, and, our, and our staff here at the City of Port Bowen. HH Knoll uh, Lakeview Park turned 100. Um, and we, we've got a redesign of the parquet where the old uh, uh, food building was. There's a, a rendering there that you can see in front of you. You know, based uh, the design, the new designs include the concrete slab, ramp, ramp apron, planter boxes, uh, shade structures, picnic tables, uh, benches with armrests, decorative pavement, uh, string lights, uh, Muskoka style seating. So make it very warm, welcoming for our community and our tourists alike. You know, a place to go down, have a coffee and sit and uh, visit with friends or grab a meal from one of the uh, food trucks that we'll have in there as we move forward through 2022. So you know, the revamping of that park is, is so important to the community uh, because I think the next slide really says it all about Port Colburn and HH Knoll. We were recently awarded the Best of Niagara Award from Bell Media. We were voted Best Playground Park by Niagara residents, you know, with a beautiful scenic backdrop of the marina, discovery spray pad, accessible playground equipment, and recently updated walking trails. It's no wonder it's a favorite park uh, throughout Niagara for everybody that visits here in Port Colburn. And I hear it all, all through, throughout meetings and, 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 uh, and, and events that I go to, how great Port Colburn is and, and the park system that we do have. So in the photo there is our park staff who, who, who uh, uh, maintain these parks and, and make sure our playground equipment is ready for, for the season or sp spray pad there at Lakeview Park. So it is, it's, it, it is a truly great park and it's a year round park. It's got uh, the best, uh, to me, the best tobogganing hill of any municipal, municipal park that I know of. So. I've been tobogganing there for a lot of years. Under economic development, uh, our waterfront development, here are some renderings of what the waterfront development we're planning along West Street at the southern terminus of the canal. The focus is to offer more than a docking area for cruise ships. We're working on plans to open up the waterfront for all our residents and guests to use. Um, so this is kind of an idea of what we're looking at. Our old works yard, sand dome and pump house, uh, they've all been removed. And, and we're continuing to work with the St. Lawrence Seaway Authority on this project and other businesses uh, in town with regards to the marine industry and uh, consulting them and how best to move forward and what type of partnerships we can develop here in Port Colburn uh, with regards to this project. So we're very excited about this. You know, you don't get every day that you can open up new waterfront areas for recreation. So this just bodes well to tie into the trails that either go up West Street through our great promenade system, uh, which will take you over to the East West Trail uh, across uh, the Clarence Street Bridge uh, or take you across through uh, to our marina or HH Knoll Park and then beyond. So a port of call. So Port Colburn uh, over uh, in the coming year. Now this slide is actually a little bit older because even though it says 50 cruise uh, ships that are confirmed to come in, actually that number's uh, increased to around 61 now. So these are stops that will be made here in Port Colburn. And like we tell people, uh, what we've been working on is with our consultant is we hope to capture around 10 to 15% of the passengers that come off. So Port Colburn being that port of call, you know, people will come here, they'll visit Port Colburn, but they'll also visit Niagara in general. So what's good for Niagara is good for Port Colburn and what's good for Port Colburn is good for Niagara. So they will go visit Niagara Falls. I mean, we have to admit uh, Niagara Falls is one of the premier destinations in the world for people. So those that haven't seen Niagara Falls will venture there. They'll do the wineries, they'll do other tourist uh, Niagara Lake, uh, things like that. 
But we are looking at making Port Colborne that destination where if they've done that, kind of that been there, done that theme, where these passengers, a lot of them are repeat people, they'll come into Port Colborne, we can do a dining experience, a shopping experience, our museum, showboat festival theater. So we're working with our business community, we're working with showboat to develop a program. So when people come in, there's something here for Port Colborne uh, or in Port Colborne to do. Our trail system or our walking uh, uh, the promenade from where the ships will dock right toward downtown core is a short area. Uh, we'll also look at a private business coming in and setting up excursions, whether it be biking, hiking, kayaking, could be scuba diving, could be fishing. There's a mire of things. Uh, and these are some of the things I, I looked at when I was in Charlottetown PEI when I toured that a couple of years ago. And, uh, and, and the private enterprise will come, they will set up. So we'll work with those people. It can be locals, it can be people from out of town that'll do it. But those opportunities do exist for, for our, our business community, whether it's within Niagara or beyond. Our new Niagara South Coast tourism branding and website has been launched. So be sure to check it out at NiagaraSouthCoast.com. Uh, our digital Main Street, which is helping brick and mortar small business achieve digital transformations through the adoption of digital tools and technologies. Port Colburn's Digital Service Squad provides personalized service to assist small businesses with growing their online presence. You can register at digitalmainstreet.ca. Um, so through, through the renewed investment in the Digital Main Street, we received a $19,000 grant from the Ontario Grants Program. Uh, small businesses in Port Colborne can register at the, at the website that I've just uh, mentioned. They receive a free assessment and access to online training modules at no cost. The cornerstone of Digital Main Street is its squad of trained specialists who deliver personalized one-on-one -on -one technological assistance. This includes support for basic website setup, Google My Business profiles, 360 degree photos, social media presence, and more. The specialists can also provide information on the Shop Here program for digital storefront or e-commerce setup and assist with applications for one-time $2,500 grants to implement a digital transformation plan. Community safety and enforcement. So last year, we, we really merged two departments, the fire department under former uh, fire chief Tom Cartwright, now new chief uh, Scott Lawson, and our uh, bylaws division. You know, we felt fire and emergency services and bylaws merge well together. They both do safety and enforcement. Um, so we felt best that it moved forward within the fire department. So we've created that new division. Um, so it continues to serve the community. Uh, Port Colborne Fire and Emergency Service joined by bylaw enforcement to create a new department, community safety and enforcement. Uh, remember, change your clock, change your batteries. Message here from the fire department. So this coming Sunday, November 7th, when your clocks fall back, be sure to take, to, to take the time out to change your batteries in your smoke and carbon monoxide detectors. You know, and it's so important. And we felt that the whole system worked better this year with regards to complaints coming in about bylaws and uh, those that are that may be skirting the law and uh, and how we uh, responded to that and with the added staff of the fire department, the fire chief and his senior staff and our new bylaws department. It, it's worked very well and I think the community has, has responded very well and accepted this, uh, this new program. Uh, public works. So right now, as we speak, Brookfield Road, the rail crossing that's owned by CN, we've had issues with that since the summer. We had some issues with regards to uh, seeing eye to eye with CN. Uh, we did through uh, our director of public works, Chris Kalamoto. Uh, we finally were able to meet at the site with CN. And, and as of today, uh, the site is being rehabilitated. Uh, we had a number of complaints from the Brookfield community and, and that work is proceeding. So I do thank CN, um, you know, because last council meeting we said, look, if we're not gonna hear from him, we'll, we'll contact the president. We had a meeting with him earlier this year uh, Scott Louis, the CAO, and myself uh, on a Canada-wide uh, webinar and, and Zoom meeting, but then we had a one-on-one -on -one with the president uh, uh, from CN, and, and a promise we had from them was that they would respond better here in Port Colborne. So now that's happened, so it'll be smooth sailing over that uh, railway crossing uh, after tomorrow. Our Erie Street water main replacement, we've retained associated engineering to provide the design and tendering of 755 meters 
of cast iron water mains that were installed in the 1960s. This will run from Kalali Street West to Neff Street. The design is in the 90% phase. And after a few final touches, this project will be going out for construction. And due to unique circumstances in Port Colbert, including shallow bedrock, water main isolation, and randomness of existing storm infrastructure, the consultant city, city staff have decided to best to install the water main in a new alignment. And we're expecting in 20, early 2022 for the construction to begin. Chippewa, Dolphin, Berkeley intersection. That's been an issue with that neighborhood for many years. There's been some improvements over the years, some things tried, um, but with the uh, uh, public meetings that we had with that uh, neighborhood, um, we've come to some uh, results, uh, which will actually still move forward. So we've uh, internal and external consultation, public work staff will be moving forward with procuring the reconstruction of the Chippewa Dolphin Berkeley intersection. It'll also address the speeding concerns along Chippewa Road. Various measures have been employed in an attempt to address these issues, such as installation of speed radars and mitigation markers in an effort to help lower traffic, <coughs> excuse me, and truck traffic volume along Chippewa Road. We've also had installed local traffic only and no truck signage on the 140 and on Chippewa Road and, and Main Street East. Street light repairs, city councils recently approved the budget to repair several street light locations, which have been off for extended periods because they require more work than the normal, just changing the bulb type work. Uh, the locations include lights on our main business districts of West Street, Main Street, and several on Clarence Street. And these will com be completed throughout the next year. Road resurfacing, ranking construction is currently in the city completing the 2021 road resurfacing. Uh, list. Uh, we have 16 roads receiving new asphalt here in the city of Port Colburn. And Public Works is also working on community outreach. We've launched a paint to plow initiative. Five Port Colburn elementary schools are currently painting plows to help brighten up our roads on those dreary winter days, which we're really not looking forward to. So you can see one of the classes starting there in the bottom right of your screen. Community development, parks and recreation uh, were extremely busy this year. The marina had a very successful season with 510 boaters calling Sugarloaf Marina home. And that's a new record for Port Colburn with seasonal boaters uh, over and above our traditional, uh, aside from COVID, uh, transient boaters that come and go from our marina. One of the best features in the summer are definitely the beaches here in Port Colburn. The best summer we implement, or this past summer, we implemented a participate pass for Port Colburn residents to access both Nickel and Cedar Bay beaches. And this was free to residents. In the past, we've always charged at Nickel Beach to get on the beach. It was always free to walk in, but you had a charge to park on the beach. Uh, we also created an online reservation system for non-residents, uh, beachgoers. We were sold out every weekend. And in 2022, we have Splash Town Niagara, a water playground, and it's confirmed they are here. Uh, they're very excited to move forward. At the bottom right, you can see a photograph of the owners of Splash Town and our staff and myself. Uh, announcing that uh, later this past summer. So we know we're going to continue to be sold out on weekends. So we hope Splash Town will actually make uh, for growth during the week. So we can see more people utilize the beach, not only from the community, but from the rest of Niagara and beyond. And uh, a couple of weekends ago, we welcomed the Brock University Badgers and the Windsor Lancer men's hockey teams to the Valley Health and Wellness Center. We had an exhibition game, which is a first for Port Colburn with regards to university hockey. Um, as everyone knows, we've had the Ice Dogs here for an exhibition game. We had Team Canada sledge hockey team just prior to going over to the Olympics using our facility as a training facility. They had a game against the USA, which we won, and the facility was uh, overflowing. It was to capacity. Uh, obviously due to COVID, our numbers were, weren't quite that big for the Brock game but we had around 300 uh, patrons that attended that. We thank everyone that helped out, our sponsors, and all funds that uh, came out of that event went to Pork Over Minor Hockey to help with their costs as we move forward this year with, with the Pork Over Minor Hockey's program. Valley Health and Well Wellness Center on a normal year sees over 30,000 patrons uh, move through those doors at that facility. Um, and in speaking of welcoming visitors, uh, an event that normally welcomes more than 300,000 people to the city of Port Colburn. We are looking forward to Canal Days returning in 2022. We have a full slate of entertainment, vendors, tall ships, and all kinds of surprises that we'll bring forward as we move uh, back to some normalcy and, 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 and bring Canal Days back. Again, COVID being what it is, those things could change. 
We really feel that it won't. Uh, the public has responded well through vaccinations, uh, specifically here in the city of Port Colborne and everything else that the public health has put forward in the government of Ontario. So we really are, are very positive that we will get back to some normalcy next year. Christmas in Port Colborne. Uh, we're doing a reverse lighted Santa Claus parade this year. We're, you know, we're bringing the parade back. We're trying to continue to be safe uh, with the way the numbers are going here in Niagara. We have a good feeling about this. So starting on December the 4th at 6.30, the floats will be stationary. You'll be able to drive through HH Knoll Lakeview Park. Look at all the lighted floats and the comforts of your own car with your family. Uh, and we think it's going to be a great day for Port Colborne. We also have a decorating contest for the holidays. The categories we have are best lawn decorations, best light display, balcony or front door display, and best window decorations. All we ask is you take a photograph and you can uh, send this into the city of Port Colborne via our website. Uh, and then we'll do a, a, a judging of those and then we'll announce that uh, just after the Christmas holidays. The downtown Christmas light display contest is open to local Port Colborne businesses. They can submit photos of their decorated storefronts and the community will vote for their favorite. All this information on how to enter can be found on our website. On November the 26th and 27th, the downtown BIA is preparing to host two Christmas markets featuring various retail and artisan vendors. Uh, it's a great opportunity to look for unique gifts for friends and loved ones for the holiday season. The location and times for these events will be determined soon. So stay tuned to the City of Port Colborne website and the BIA website. And on Saturday, November 23rd, Fire and Emergency Services, <clears throat> excuse me, they'll be hosting a drive-through toy drop-off in support of Port Cares from 5 to 7 p.m. That was very successful last year. And we look forward to another successful year in uh, 2021. Port Colborne and Histor uh, Historical Marine Museum. Uh, the Port Colborne Historical Marine Museum has been extremely busy inventing new ways to engage uh, the community. They have the Digging for Roots Diversity Garden, which was presented this past summer. Um, flower pots were showcased all around the exterior of the museum. It was very busy that day. And there were some great paintings of both historical and modern type um, uh, artwork on these pots. You can see an example right there in the photo. We've introduced the Museum Heritage Passport. It's available both at the museum and the library. Our Heritage Passport is filled with activities and a scavenger hunt that will provide time traveling fun around the museum grounds. The passports are free and once complete, you'll be eligible for our new History Chasers Club badge. Book a safe service, bass. No pun intended, but uh, we are a fishing community. <laughs> we're, we're offering personalized tours for guests to explore the exhibits and our gift shop right here at our museum. Christmas at the museum, the grand old Christmas will return, <clears throat> excuse me, in a modified form. And this year, Arabella's Tea Room will be doing a takeout biscuit kit. In 2021, the library continued its response to the impact of COVID and reinventing library services and delivery methods to ensure as little an interruption to our patrons of the, of the library as possible. Uh, to reduce barriers to service, library staff implemented safe protocols with a 15 minute curbside pickup. We had in-person browsing, access to public computers and expanded digital services and online access. Digital programming will continue uh, to the end of this year. Libraries in Niagara Cooperative, better known as LINK, the library joined that in, in November of 2020 and has enjoyed many benefits and service enhancements for, from its new integrated library system and its partnership with nine other Niagara libraries. Uh, it's been a cost savings. Um, we've re received better uh, uh, technical support throughout the nine libraries. And uh, we, we've also have uh, those cost savings are, are basically associated with the resource sharing, increased circulation and an expanded user base. The library benefits from its continued and strong relationship with the city of Port Colborne. Of note in 2021 is the library's new website branding. Thanks to the opportunity to participate in the city's project, the website and branding are vital to help the library communicate its mission and to ensure that the community is aware of library services, including free internet. The library partners with local agencies, community groups, service clubs, and local schools 
So during the pandemic, the libraries conducted virtual class visits, writing book reviews. The Pork Open Optimist Club donated boxes of new books to the library, and we really thank the Optimist Club for that program. Uh, and it adds to our library collection for the benefit of the entire community. Although under COVID restrictions, the library assists local businesses with meeting space rentals and promoting shopping and dining locally. Currently, the library is printing vaccination receipts for free for the public so they can access restaurants, businesses, and venues. Capital projects and commitment to growth, the library is committed to continue to grow and build with resilience and innovation and help the community recover from the pandemic. And projects uh, in 2021 included updating three service areas to help strengthen the library's capacity to safely provide library services and safe spaces for people to meet, work, learn, and connect. Upgrade the connectivity and phones to enhance user experience and up, they upgraded their fire panel and fire alarm uh, system. So, uh, so that's really a quick highlight. Uh, the other issue that came up last week was our budget deliberations. We've, we've uh, gone through our capital and our, and our and, uh, and, uh, capital budget and, and levy budget. Thank you to my staff that are sitting here. Uh, our blended rate is looking at uh, a little under 2.8%. Uh, and that we've, we really feel that'll adjust lower. So it's under inflation. And that'll be based on the school board rate and basically putting in, as we receive these numbers, the growth over last year for the city of Port Colburn. Uh, we do have our water and wastewater rate uh, meeting coming soon. So please stay tuned for that. So as I mentioned, it's been a quick highlight for what's happening and what's to come at the city of Port Colburn. I can't thank city staff and council enough for their hard work during the past year. We also want to thank the community for their resilience and understanding as we navigate this pandemic. I know we're coming out ahead, stronger and united. So again, Vern, thanks. And we, again, we really appreciate the chamber doing this and we'll take questions right now. Well, thank you, Mayor Steele. That's fantastic. And um, uh, what a story. Um, and um, uh, thank you for going above and beyond. And um, despite, um, you know, being under the weather, uh, um, helping out <laughs> with this. Um, it, to, to, to me, it sounded like your voice held out pretty well. So not so too bad, that. not too bad. <laughs> um yeah so um uh let's see um first thing is um um any any news on uh, hopa and your mou with them and what what you maybe foresee as uh canal lands development for for uh, industrial use and things like that yeah so the federal election kind of put a, a bit of a, a a stop to everything obviously um but now that we've come out of the election uh MP Badaway has been reelected, which is a good thing for Port Colburn, being a former mayor, a resident here. Uh, both Vance and I work very well together now and when we we're on council, you know, we are very good friends. So, you know, he is a big ally to the city of Port Colburn. So we are moving forward and uh, through the Ministry of Transportation at the federal level with, uh, with HOPA. Um, HOPA did purchase uh, a former uh, commercial industrial property on Welland Street, which they're going to uh, move into uh, in the near future. Um, and they're looking to um, enhance that property, put a proper uh, building on it for the marine use in that area, because it is our busiest dock uh, at the south end of the canal uh, with the rank and stone dock and the north end being the other busy dock here in Port Colburn. So as we move forward, people are going to see the old uh, door site uh, refurbished, revamped, uh, look uh, way better than it has. And that's a good sign for Port Colburn. Um, and some new building uh, will go on in that uh, in the near future. Hopefully, actually, 2022, we're looking forward to that uh, progressing. And we'll hear more out of the Ministry of Transportation as they move forward with the uh, with the HOPA contract. That's awesome. Is, is there still discussion of underwater um, services uh, transfer from one side of the canal to the other? Or is that dead or just something <clears throat> that no, we see no. in the future? No, it's, it's moving forward uh, again. COVID being what it's done to uh, all municipalities in the region of Niagara. So we just recently had a meeting with our public works staff and uh, staff of the region. Um, we were able uh, back in 2019 before COVID hit, uh, bring more players to the table with regards to Canadian Niagara Power, uh, the gas company, uh, Bell Telephone, uh, Kojiko Cable. Um, so some of those entities uh, want to get involved in that program. So the program is actually quite a grown. So the the size of the pipe going into the canal based uh, on our last conversation has actually grown in size. So um, really we're waiting for the, for the, um, 
Barrack Road, uh, the new water tower there to be installed and everything set for that, which has been done. So the new services, specifically water and sewer, will travel under the canal from Barrack Road across to Second Concession. And then it can travel up our rail line, which we own here in the city of Port Colborne, uh, up to Ramey Road to our new industrial park. And it'll also tie in with the water line that's uh, already there that goes out to uh, to Pinty's, uh, the former uh, Port Colborne poultry plant. Um, so yeah, so that's uh, moving forward. It's, it's, it has been delayed, but again, due to COVID. So uh, we'll see more information uh, over the next year coming out on that project. That's awesome. Just fantastic. Um, uh, regarding regional transit or integrated uh, transit systems, um, we, we recently spoke with uh, Mayor Frank Campion of Welland and, and um, he, he wasn't against the whole notion of an integrated transit system, but his council voted against the original proposition simply because he wasn't happy with the government, with the, shall I say, governance methodology that was put forward in that particular um, 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 uh, plan. So, so, so what, what are your thoughts on the whole thing and where do you see that sitting with Port Coburn? Um, are, are you still defending whether the cost is going to be there for the benefit or are you okay with it or, 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 um, or how, how do you see that? Yeah. So staff at the region came back to council with actually a, 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 a revised plan. I can say that uh, with better costing for municipalities. Um, quite frankly, Vern, I've been involved with this file when I was served as a city councilor back in the early 2000s. I took over for Councilor Bodner when he became mayor on that committee. So, you know, we're looking back almost 20 years and for this to take 20 years to do where Waterloo region did it in two years is, is kind of farcical as far as I'm concerned as a mayor. It's time we do this. Niagara needs its one single transit system. Uh, we think a buy-in from every municipality can be a little bit different, which is what staff presented. Uh, we're looking at the on-demand program here in Port Colborne with regards to our municipality. So now we get to serve 100% of our municipality as opposed to a small urban section that we have. So it's a great benefit to the municipality. We'll continue with the uh, integration between Well and Port Colborne and St. Catharines with our bus, uh, which is a regional transit bus. Um, so it's going to bode well and it has to go through. And I know what Welland's talking about. They've run transit for a long time. They have some issues that they're concerned with down there, but, you know, we really hope they see the light. But in speaking with, uh, with Mayor Senzik and Mayor Diodotti, who run the other two big transit uh, authorities here, um, you know, we all agree that going to one centralized system will help right from the Grimsby border down to Fort Erie and beyond to Niagara Lake. We know GO is coming in here. The new station is going in in Grimsby. So, you know, you want to come in by a GO train, whether you drop off at uh, Grimsby or St. Catharines or Niagara Falls, there's a, going to be a, a great region-wide bus system that can bring people everywhere on, on a good, timely fashion. So, um, you know, we are in the 21st century, so let's, uh, let's continue to move that way and, and get this done as soon as possible. That's awesome. Uh, you touched upon um, outdoor patios and, and um, 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 council has gone ahead with a trial period for winter patios as well. Um, where do you see the future of patios? Um, are they going to go away when COVID goes away or, um, or, or what's the story with that? No, I, patios are here to stay. I mean, we really started this prior to, to COVID. I mean, we had uh, uh, Breakwall Brewery downtown put a, put a curbside patio in. We had uh, the um, Lock Pizza did it. And then this past year, we had uh, Green Apple and uh, Pie Guys uh, uh, put their patios in. Um, some of the bars and restaurants have expanded their patios with, within their own property, which, they're, which they can do without uh, any issue with the city. But, you know, quite frankly, using city property, streets and, and sidewalks, I mean, go to any city in Europe, no matter how big, no, how small, they're everywhere. Uh, when I was able to travel uh, to Scandinavia and, and, and France and England in, in 2018 with my wife, um, you know, it was great then. 22 or 23 years ago, Huntsville brought that idea out. That's where really I brought that when I became mayor to the city and, and to our bylaws department. And we contacted Huntsville and got all their plans and, and bylaws. And, and, you know, we designed our own, but, you know, you don't always want to reinvent the wheel. So we used a lot of their issues that they were using up there. And they, quite frankly, had experience at it. So they were able to give us the, you know, the pros and cons of everything and how they made changes to it. I, I want to see it expand. I think people really enjoy on a nice summer day to sit down and have a nice lunch. They can have a coffee and uh, talk with their friends and, 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 
and family or you know enjoy a, a nice cold local beer made right here in Port Colborne or a glass of wine right from here in Niagara. You know, these are things that people enjoy, you know. Um, again, we're in the 21st century. Let's keep moving that way and, and let everybody enjoy the city of Port Colborne and what it has to offer. So I do see as, as Port Colborne expands that we're going to see expanding patios. And, you know, we welcome it here. We'll work well with our community and especially our business community in both BIA districts. Perfect. That's awesome. No, that'll be fun. And, and um, Port Coburn is changing. The view of Port Coburn, it's just an amazing little community. Your downtown is really revitalized and revitalizing. And certainly, I, I, I think we all agree with that. Um, you know, this is a question we've asked all mayors. And, and to be honest, um, I, don't think, I don't think any one of them really had anything concrete with regards to, to, to the solution. And I don't blame the mayors for it, but maybe you can enlighten us as to where is the quandary when it comes to affordable housing? And, and, and how much control do we have over it? And is it a dollar issue? Is it a finding developer issue? Or maybe you could enlighten us a little bit more on that, because we, we've never gotten a clear answer on any of it other than, yeah, we want to have it. Yeah, I mean, every mayor, council, regional councillor, regional chair, we've all talked about this. Um, let me give you the poor corporate experience. Um, you know, it really starts from federal provincial dollars. We do need those dollars down here. Um, but here in the city of Port Coburn, we've taken a, a piece of land that really was underutilized. Uh, we're going to be able to develop that into a, an affordable housing for seniors, uh, for single parents and their children. Um, we've actually had a developer that's coming into Port Coburn. And, and when we sat down and looked at his development, it's got three apartment units going in. Um, and we talked to him about making a portion of those units affordable. Uh, he and his team took that back. In fact, after the weekend, he called me back and he said, Bill, I really didn't really understand what we were talking about. We sat down with our team, but let me give you a story. And he said to me over the weekend, my mother-in-law needed to be moved into a, uh, from her house, but she wasn't ready for a retirement home. And I'm looking for somewhere. She's not a, a rich lady. Um, we needed something affordable. And he said, it was a heck of a time, just over a number of days trying to find this. He says, so we are committed as a developer coming into Port Colburn that we will make affordable housing within our three units. Uh, not every unit uh, will be affordable. Uh, it'll be a mix, which is great, which is what we, we invite people to come in and do, developers. So, you know, there's a, there's a great concept there that we're bringing that to the table when we speak with developers and we look at their plans and we really explain to them if they really don't know how the affordable housing programs can work. Um, so, you know, really, it's going to be a success story here in Port Colburn, but I think that will move through Niagara. But again, you know, it's, it's, it's our MPs here in Niagara that we need to talk to, whether they're on the government side or on the, on the opposition side, that, that government funding is important to these programs. Um, you know, I'm not, I, I can't remember the numbers. We actually were discussing this at police services the other day uh, through with our police chief about, um, you know, how many people don't have affordable housing um, and how many people are looking for it. Um, you've seen some articles in the paper where developers are coming in and buying up uh, houses that have been changed from single family homes to multi-res homes. And, you know, they've asked their tenants to move out for, for various reasons, whether they're right or wrong. Um, but we as a city, we're not going to be building this ourselves, but we have to create the atmosphere for developers to come in. Um, we have to partner with them. We have to help them with land. So if it's really land that the city may own that we can divest, um, we can put parameters around that, that it's strictly for affordable housing or for mixed use housing. Um, you know, really that's how we're going to move forward. So whether it's Port Colborne, Niagara Falls, St. Catharines, Welland, and Grimsby in that area, Fort Erie, um, you know, that's the way we're all going to have to move forward, but it, it's really partnerships that you have to form in this um, and really make sure that your planning department is ready to move forward and, and really bring this to the table when developers come in. Um, that A, don't have a grasp or aren't really sure how to move forward with, with uh, different, uh, whether it's townhouses or, or strictly up and down apartment buildings. So hope that answers your question. <laughs> but it, it is, it's uh, well, a moving, Vern, it's a moving target. And, you know, we're here to do the best we can. And, you know, again, we'll work with groups in the community as a whole um, because it is an important uh, matter right here in the city of Port Colorado. Well, I, well, quite frankly, were it not for the Russian judge, you got a 9.5 out of 10. So <laughs> like, uh, 
there, there, there isn't any other mayor that's come close to a, to a decent answer on that one. Thank you very much. That, that was um, that was well put and and uh, certainly enlightens a lot of stuff. So thank thank you on that front. And, and it sounds like you are taking the initiative, and, and uh, you know we have examples to show. We we haven't had that from others, uh, but you've got concrete examples where you're moving forward on it. So so congratulations. Yeah. So Vern, just on that, this council has been dedicated to this since day one. During the election, every councillor that's been elected and myself have talked about this. It was in our pamphlets. It was in our information. We discussed it at the, the debates. Um, we talked about it to the community to going door to door. Um, so, you know, it is an important subject. It's an important subject for everybody. As people downsize, specifically our seniors, um, you know, you look at the cost of housing. They may be in a house that they purchased many years ago for, you know, 50, 60,000 and you know, they're selling them now for four and 500,000. So for that person to move out of a large home, and I always use the, the Kent Street um, example because Kent Street's full of two-story uh, century homes that, uh, you know, quite frankly, have had people that live in them for a long, long time, families. And, you know, the, you know, uh, you know uh, husband and wife may move out or, a husband, or, you know, a widow or a widower, and they want to downsize, but, you know, you want to sell this two-story home that as they grow old, you know, it's a little harder to look after. They may want to move into a townhouse or to uh, an apartment building. The cost to move, even on a single family or a single story bungalow is, is crazy. What they're selling for is what they're paying, if not more. So that's where the affordability and the affordable housing comes into play in that, you know, those people that are looking for those, uh, for those um, living spaces uh, need help. And, and again, we're here to help. So, you know, council is 100% on board with this. And I, and I really want to emphasize that. Oh, that's awesome. That's fantastic. Um, no, and and um, that's again. I think it's somewhat unique. Um, you know, um, you, you guys aren't just talking about it; you're walking it, and you know, and, and doing it. So, congratulations. Um, recent thing has come up with um, more or less regional council on on a um, on a municipal planning front is, of course, developers that are trying to get um, employment lands converted over to residential. And, and um, you know, we, we've seen some bad examples where that's happened next to pre-existing industrial. Then all of a sudden, a couple of years later, uh, Ministry of the Environment or whomever um, are saying that the industrial properties that were there forever uh, now have to cease and desist because they're making too much noise or too much odor or whatever it might be. So, so and, and regions trying to fight against it, at least it seems that way. Um, but you're on regional council and, and, you know, I'm wondering what your position is on employment lands. You know, you're in an envious position in Port Coburn where you're developing more employment lands rather than try to claw back on it. But we're seeing other municipalities doing the opposite. And, and uh, so, so, so can you enlighten us a little bit on your viewpoint and all that? Yeah, I think it's, you know, it really does take a mix. And, and again, I'll use Port Coburn because that's where I'm the mayor of and, and uh, you know, I'm not intimately involved in it with the other communities. And I know what we discuss at the region, but yeah, Port Colburn, I mean, the, the Highway 140 uh, industrial park that we're gonna be moving forward with uh, in 2022. Uh, we talked about the servicing earlier of that. Um, you know, we're looking at other areas of the city that we own, uh, specifically in our industrial park up, up off Elm Street and Invertos. Uh, we're looking at some lands there that we're opening up. So we're working both with the, the, the Niagara region and uh, the, the Niagara Peninsula Conservation Authority on a number of lands and how we can move forward and any restrictions that may fall into that. But, you know, Port Coburn is unique. You know, we have a lot of urban area here that hasn't been developed. So, and again, I mentioned earlier, the Augustine farm out off of Clally and Elizabeth, um, you know, developers purchased that. I think the number of homes that can go in there is anywhere from 1500 to 2000. Uh, we have Westwood Estates owned by Lester Schultz limited company, which Todd Schultz operates. He's going into his last phase. Um, so that'll be finished in the West end of Port Coburn. We have the Northland Estates, as I mentioned, up by the Sobeys Canadian Tire Mall. Um, you know, there's other areas, private land that's actually becoming available uh, up in the north end of Port Colburn. Um, we have uh, Meadow Heights, which is uh, moving forward with their next phase. Um, so, you know, we're lucky here that we've got a lots of urban area that can be built on that's not, well, some of it is close to our industrial park in the north end, but really isn't next door to the plant or anything like that. That's where we are lucky. And we're moving our industrial park to an area that isn't built up, that really has no housing uh, near it. So it's not going to be that, you know, somebody moves in kind of like when Toronto built the airport way out in the middle of nowhere and everybody moved around and complained about the airport. 
um, you know, we're, we, we hopefully won't see that here. So as we develop our industrial up off uh, Highway 140, all the way to the Welland border, I think we can do well at keeping the residential areas away from the majority of those areas. There still is some industrial commercial areas that are close to housing that have traditionally been uh, zoned that way. So, you know, you're going to see a little bit of it specifically along the canal. I mean, we have a working canal here in Port Coburn. Uh, some people complain about it, but, you know, that's that's the lifeblood of, of Niagara is the Welland Canal from St. Catharines to, to Port Coburn. And, you know, it's a huge um, um, uh, economic uh, uh, resource. And re yeah. Yeah. Um, picking the right word, but, you know, a driver here in the city of Port Colborne, it's only going to get busier. The canal is going to get busier. So whether we have nothing here in Port Colborne for boats to stop, the canal is going to be used and ships are going to come here. Let's get them to stop here. Let's get them to unload their passengers here in the cruise ship side. Let's get them to unload their, their products here that can be moved through rail or a shorter highway run. You know, the climate change has to come into that whole thing. And we know shipping and, and trucking are, are advancing uh, for better, uh, uh, to, for their uh, betterment of their climate footprint. So, you know, we are moving forward with that. So, you know, it is a delicate balance and, and we're trying to do this in Port Colborne with uh, the least, um, um, you know, uh, I guess. Uh, disruption how, or? Yeah, disruption, how it can affect our, our, our residential areas. You know, Welland Street is a res residential area of the village, East Village. Which is right next to a working canal. So, but that's been that way since day one. I mean, you know, uh, they really took out a huge area called East Street when they expanded the canal. So, they've taken out business and 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 residential areas to enlarge the canal back in the in the twenties and early thirties. So, you know, Port Coburn has changed all over these years based on this canal, and we just think we're we're going to get busier by it. But it has to be done properly and in consultation and and really industry put in the right spot here in Port Coburn. That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, the collaboration with other municipalities and so forth. Um, you know, I, 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 I remember last year you talking about uh, legal services and combining with, I think, Fort Erie and Wayne Fleet on that front. Um, anything else, uh, transit obviously um, taking place. Is there anything else that, uh, that, that might be a, a, of interest in that regard going forward? Yeah, we're, yeah, we're are in, in discussing uh, between council and, and our senior staff here uh, through our CAO, Scott Louie, you know, the, the, the big five, I call it, <laughs> Port Colburn, Wayne Fleet, Pelham, Thorold, and Welland, when we signed our memorandum of understanding back in 2019 to work harder together, you know, specifically on buying power, um, we can look at uh, in, in, uh, going out for RFP for our insurance uh, for municipalities. Is it, is it better to go out as a group? Uh, we're discussing that. We're talking about planning issues, how we can share planning departments. Um, we've talked about uh, specifically between Fort Erie, Wayne Fleet, and Port Colburn, um, drainage superintendents and how we can deal with drainage. There are less drainage engineers here in Ontario than there have been. Um, as the small companies get eaten up, a lot of the big companies don't do municipal drains anymore. So uh, that's harder to do. So we're in discussions of that on how to share municipal uh, drainage engineers and, and how our, our, our own departments can work better together, uh, specifically uh, across uh, Lake Erie uh, shoreline from Wayne Fleet uh, down to Fort Erie. So, you know, those discussions are always ongoing. The CAOs have discussions on a weekly basis and these things that they talk about and, and both council and myself are always bringing these ideas forward to our staff. And, uh, you know, as we move forward and we can hope we can see, uh, you know, how we can cut costs and, and, and save the taxpayers some money and, and, and quite frankly, save the city some money on our budget side. So, you know, we've, we've seen some fruits of our labor through the last uh, couple of years. Again, COVID has really put a, you know, a big kick uh, to municipalities and how we work just based on, on, you know, the rules that we've set up and, and, you know, we're not, you know, not everybody's in city hall every day, even though they're working from home. So trying to get those online uh, meetings going at the beginning and moving things forward, but we were so focused on, on COVID, some things, you know, did get put to the side and, you know, it had to be that way. Um, but, you know, moving forward again, the CAOs are talking, uh, our departments are talking with other departments. You know, we do have agreements with uh, the region now, and, you know, we buy our fuel through the region program, which is uh, at a great cost savings. <clears throat> and there's other things that we were talking to the region about uh, with regards to, uh, you know, road closure signage, uh, storm signage. You know, we've, we've come through a couple of huge storms since 2018. Um, 
and you know Port Coburn, you know by the time you're closing down streets because of downed power lines and trees, we run out of a, out of out of barricades and signage. So we've discussed that with the region where we can and and with the city of Welland and the, and the town of Fort Erie with regards to almost having a depot near our area that we can all share in, in the uh, in uh, road closure signage and things like that that really come. You know, people think, well, you know, it's such a small deal. Not during a storm. That October storm we had. I mean, you know, the downtown core was uh, decimated with uh, power lines and, and trees. So, you know, if you can't close a road properly, it, it becomes unsafe for our public. So, you know, that partnership between municipalities and, and the region is is, is going to come into place as we move forward and as as the climate changes uh, right here in Niagara. That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, well, you know, let, let me wrap it up and, and, and uh, just say that, um, uh, you know, again, thank you so much for your time and your effort. Your presentation was, was phenomenal. Um, our question and answer was great. <laughs> a lot of insight. Um, you know, uh, you know, the heck with a Russian judge. Let's call it a 10 on 10. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Ray. <laughs> but, but no, way to go. In. And thank you so much. And, 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 you know, you have to be the envy of a lot of mayors and other municipalities that don't have all the resources you have at your fingertips right now. Um, but you're obviously putting them to good use and, and using them. So, so congrats on that. And uh, uh, it's been fantastic. And, you know, and our chambers always had a great relationship with your office. And, and I thank you for that. And um, I, I'm sure that'll continue and um, for, for the benefit of, of our community, for sure. Oh, definitely. I mean, the, any partnership that we can develop here in Port Colborne, I mean, I'm big on partnerships and collaboration. So as we move forward into 2022, we look forward to more of that, you know, uh, on the residential basis, on our developer basis, on new industry and, and business coming into the city of Port Colborne. Chambers of Commerce, any groups in Port Colborne, you know, our Lions Club, our Optimist Club, uh, and so on and so forth. So, you know, that's huge. No matter how big or so, how small it can be, you know, reach out to my office, reach out to staff here at the City Hall. They're here to help everybody and work together and, and you know, really for the benefit of all. So again, thanks to, to yourself, Vern and Dolores for putting this together and the Chamber of Commerce and the members that are watching today and those that will see this on, on your YouTube channel as we move forward. And anybody has a question out there, you can email me at mayor at city of Port uh, call our office. If you don't get me, you'll probably talk to Nancy Giles, my EA, uh, or get a hold of our customer service and, and figure out what you need through them. So we're here, we're here to do business and, uh, you know, we're here to make life better and easier for everyone. So, you know, we look forward to 2022. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, a couple of, um, of, um, of notices of things coming up is uh, our next mirrors update series is Tuesday, November 18th. And we'll be featuring Mayor Gibson from the Township of uh, Waynefleet. Um, also, uh, register for our next section of um, Road to Recovery. Um, that series has had some very interesting topics, and uh, highly recommend taking a peek at it. Either past uh, past um, um, uh, um, issues or or the one coming up. Um, we'll be hosting a webinar on November sixteenth on. Um, your mandatory COVID-19 safety plan. So um, this is pretty good for business owners. You should probably have a look at this just to make sure you're well aware of what your safety plan is required to have. Um, we're hosting a, a, uh, another cheers and chat on November 24th. Uh, bring a glass of wine and uh, sit back and, uh, and have a good discussion. Uh, we're gonna be talking about what businesses need to consider for economic health in 2022. Um, Lastly, um, Niagara gift cards is a is a very interesting program that has been launched by the um, by the chamber, um, South Niagara chambers actually, and um, you, there there are a number of uh, of uh, businesses online, and if you are a business, uh, consider putting yourself online. It's free, and uh, you can purchase gift cards through this, which um, will be an automatic cash infusion into the pockets of the of the business owners. And uh, we'll be supporting our local businesses. So, so give it a try, uh, particularly this Christmas when some of the gifts you're looking for may not be on the shelf. Uh, a gift card uh, might be just the answer for you. So have a look online for Niagara gift cards. And if you're a business, why not subscribe? Um, yeah, and that's it. And again, uh, Mayor Steele has been fantastic. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, visit our website for other details. And uh, everybody have a wonderful day. Thank you.